this administration how they sold this country out. You know, I, I have the honor of working for the greatest president of my lifetime, Donald Trump. I actually retired, and uh, I don't, when the election was ongoing, uh, Trump versus Clinton, I, I announced my retirement right before the election. I was convinced really Clinton would win, and, I, and after eight years of Obama, I said, I, I can't do this no more. So I signed a contract with a private company made called twice as much as I did as the other director. And, and then I remember the night I woke up, the morning I woke up, Trump won, my wife looked at me and said, now what are you going to do? <laughs> But I already signed a contract with, a, with a, another company. They already found my replacement. That's what I had trying to do. So I said, I didn't move up to retirement. So my retirement uh, so, uh, thing was in January. And so I went to the ice building the last time ever as a retired as, as uh, the number three in command. And at the end of the ceremony, uh, my chief of staff came down to me and says, you got an emergency phone call in the office. Right at the end of the event. And my office is empty. All my stuff is boxed up in my garage at home. And I want the office to pick the phone up with John Kelly, who was Secretary of Homeland Security, with President Trump. He says, we know this is a bad time, but we'd like you to stay with the agency. And I said, you're right, bad time, I just retired. And John Kelly says, no, he didn't. The paperwork's on my desk. I decided. <laughs> So I went home, I said, look, it's Friday, I already signed this contract, I don't know what my obligations are. I got to talk to my wife, and I moved my wife around the country like seven times. She put up a lot of bullshit. I said, I got to at least talk to my family, and I, I got to talk about this contract. I said, I don't know what's legally binding. So he said, all right, Friday, I can call Monday morning, 0600, I didn't answer it. The last thing John Kelly said to me was, Don, I want to move you to this stop. He was the President of the United States is asking you, a career law enforcement officer, to stay a little longer to help him. He needs you. We'll talk to you on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so on my way home, my wife said, what's the phone call about October? She goes, hell no. She goes, uh, you're about to make twice as much money, you don't have to put up all the hate. And I don't like her because she hated Trump. She is the biggest fan of her. Because she saw what he did for this nation. Yes. So on Monday morning and Sunday night, we were laying in bed. She goes, What are you going to do? I said, What do you think I'm going to do? She goes, You're going to, you're going to go back. I said, She's damn right. <laughs> and I did. So Monday I said yes, so they said, okay, we'll turn your phone off because we're going to the White House, we're going to announce it later this afternoon, and I'm sure your phone will go crazy, and it did. Tuesday morning, I walked back in the ICE office to the basement of all these employees, well, I don't know why I was back, and they just gave me all these gifts. <laughs> so I walked, in, I walked into the director's office, and I was, I was uh, met by three attorneys, ethics attorneys. They had a list of everything I received on that Friday, and I didn't give it all back, including a $500 gift certificate they gave my wife. I said, you know what, let me just write you a check for that. <laughs> Tuesday morning, I'm in Air Force One, what is the greatest president this country ever had in my opinion. I met, and that's when I first met President Trump. What made President Trump great is that, well, the results of what we did under his administration, we got illegal immigration down 83%. Wow. Illegal immigration was down to a 40 year low. We secured the border at the highest level we've ever secured the border. And I started the border until 1984. I was the first ICE director and actually came up through the ranks. So the 20,000 men and women that worked for me, I never asked them to do anything I didn't do myself as an agent. But it was, it, was, it was such an honor working with this man to get that sort of success yes. that we've never seen before. I worked for six presidents, starting with Ronald Reagan. Every president I've ever worked for, including Clinton and Obama, they want to do something about for them. They understood you can't have national security without border security. Some did more than others. Of course, Obama and Clinton did less, but they did something. Joe Biden the first president in the history of this nation who came into office in unsecured work. And that just pissed me off. Every, every morning I wake up, I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off. Because 
to normally take the secure border and to normally unsecure it. And what what commander in chief would do that? Right. Illegal, illegal immigration is not a victimless crime. You need to understand when, when he, what he did. I wrote an op-ed for Fox News six months before the election ended, and I said, Joe Biden becomes president, we lose the border. And because of what he was saying, I'm campaign trail. I'm going to shut ICE down. I'm going to put more in, more in torment and deportations. I want to war amnesty. I want to approve DACA. I'll give free health care to illegal aliens. When you say those kind of things, the whole world won't come to the greatest nation on earth. And when he became president, he kept those promises and signed over 90 executive orders, which opened our border. Now, I don't care what you're, and I say this all the time, a lot of people, they're all there today, you're homeless racist. You know, I have members of Congress call me a bigot during testimony. If I'm a bigot for enforcing the law, what's that make you? You wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've had my share of testimony since I retired, and more people know me from YouTube than from the ice director. Because of the likes of AOC, who was a moron, by the way. <laughs> I would go and testify about the border situation, and it used to be, testimony used to be, there's a problem. We'll bring the experts in to testify. And Congress to try to legislate fix the problem. It's not like it's not that way anymore. Democrat leadership wants to come to the five minute speech, attack you for five minutes, and not let you respond. Last time I testified, I refused to let that one of them shut me down. That one congressman Jay Paul gaveled me and gaveled me and told me shut up, I just kept going. I heard right to talk that day. Mm. And the thing is, we're on the roll, they're not. I just wish one day they put me. Let me ask the question to put them on the roof. Yeah. 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 My wife said, why do you keep doing this? She goes, you're retired, you don't have to put up the hate. Because it is, it's, it's just hate, 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 hate. Or control bad, ice is bad, you're a Nazi, you're a bigot. She goes, why do you keep doing it? I was, I'm, I was on my way out the door. And this is when I got to fight with AOC and Jay Ball and Laura Washington Schultz, another idiot. And I said, because I love my country, and I promised the men and women of ICE and Border Patrol, my last message to them, when I retired for the second time, was I may be retiring from this position, but I'll always have your six. I started my career in Border Patrol. I joined when I was a cop in New York. I started in Border Patrol. I wore the uniform. Those men and women wearing green are the finest one percent this country has, outside the veterans. In the eyes, you give me a kiss, he goes, uh, I won't say a prayer for you today. I said, you better say a prayer for the first Democrat pissing me off. I'm looking for a fight. <laughs> and I got, I got a fight with several people. <laughs> well, what makes, what makes me angry every day, and you know, people ask me all the time, why are you so emotional on Fox? Why are you so emotional when you testify? Because I, I take this seriously, and I, I'm, I'm honestly pissed off. Because the secure border saves lives. I wrote a book called Defend the Border Save Lives. I did this for 35 years. When illegal immigration is on 83%, that's huge. If we take 83% of the cars off the highway, which have less highway deaths, people say our administration was cruel and inhumane. Doctors Without Borders did a study, along with several other organizations, was in the comprehensive study. 31% of women that make the journey through cartels are raped. One out of three. When, when the illegal grace is on 83%, how many women are being raped? How many children are dying? How many pounds of cartel, uh, how many pounds of fentanyl is not getting into the country to kill Americans? President Trump's policies save lives, many lives, uncompensated lives. Under Joe Biden, this is much more humane. Let me give you a few data points with Joe Biden. Over 100,000 Americans have died from fentanyl since become president. And the DEA says 95% of the fentanyl comes across the border. Yeah. Over 1,300 migrants have died in U.S. soil, being in the river of the desert. I was, in, I was down in Texas about a month ago, Burks County. I was out of the ground with the sheriff. Four hours, four hours, we found two dead bodies. And that's what you find. Many people that drown the river will never be found. Many people that die in the desert will never be found. As a matter of fact, one of the corpses we found, all we found was a, a, a skull, a backbone, a piece of an arm. Because the animals eat. 
the sheriff told me they're lucky to find one in four. So if they found 1,300, how many of them died? That is a record by far. Not even close to any previous record. Not, not even like a triple of the highest number of deaths ever. So his, his, he says policies are humane, but they're killing Americans at record numbers, they're killing migrants at record numbers, cartels are making billions of dollars, trafficking of women and children for sexual purposes at an all-time high. His policies are the most inhumane policies I've ever heard right. or seen yeah. in any yeah. yeah. I, uh, when, when, when the election was over, and we're back briefing out the incoming administration, we told them, because if the president does what he said he's going to do in the campaign, and shut this down, shut this down, shut this down, you're going to see a border search that you've never seen. They did it anyways. What, what really upsets me about the current president and the Secretary of Homeland Security who needs to be in peace on day one to take back Congress. Mm -hmm. He was, Alejandro Mayorkas was the Deputy Secretary in 1450. Biden was Vice President. I think the lady said before I walked up, they, uh, President Obama gave me the highest rank of war available to civilians today. Because of what we did, we shut down the surge in 1450. We had a surge not this big. We had a surge. How did we shut it down? We built detention facilities. We detained people. We made them see a judge. 90% lost their case. We put on the airplane and sent them home. Board members did it. What are they doing now? They're not detaining them. They're being released out of court date. Yeah. And ICE has been decapitated. The old ADC I run. The same year had 1.4 million, 1.7 million encounters the first year. Under the Biden administration, ICE removed 26,000. 1.7, and they removed 26. When I was in charge of the ERO, in FY12, we removed 409,000. We went from 409,000 to 26,000. In the three years I ran enforcement removal operations, I oversaw the removal of one million of the new aliens. 26,000. This is because the men and women of ICE want to do the job. They can. The Secretary of Homeland Security has said this is not illegal enough to be illegally in the United States. ICE cannot arrest somebody for being in the country illegally. I went, I went bonkers. I, went, I did a talk show that morning after that announcement. I went, who, who is the secretary to say to a sworn law, for, a law enforcement officer, you will not enforce that law. You are going to, you are going to turn against the OCT. You're not going to do the job you swore to do. You're not going to enforce the laws enacted by Congress and signed by the president. I mean, who the hell does it? If this is, look, if people say all the time, well, they're incompetent. No, it's not. It's not incompetence. It's not mismanagement. This is by design. This is all the right. mm -hmm. People say, why do you think they're doing it? They're doing it because they perceive a future, a future political benefit. They don't have to be about voting. They think they, they do think there'll be future Democratic voters, but it doesn't have to happen that much. Because remember, another thing Joe Biden did first week's office overturned the Trump census rule. Now millions of illegal aliens be counted in, in the census in the sanctuary cities, which is going to result in more seats in household deaths. This is about controlling this country. They sold this country out for power. That's why I'm pissed. I'm pissed because I see the number of people dying. Right now, today, a child will drown in the river. Many women be sexually assaulted by the cartels. I know them because I investigated these cartels for over three decades. In 2003, an incident occurred in Victoria, Texas that changed me forever. It makes me the, the guy I am today why I'm pissed off and why I fight so hard. I was in Dallas, Texas giving a speech to the International Chiefs of Police. We just became ICE. So headquarters took me down there to, to explain to the chief what ICE was, what we're trying to do. We investigate smuggling of drugs, guns, people, trafficking of women, technology being stolen from the United States and sent overseas to our, our